At the moment, I'm part of a team based at the ANU uh, and organised by the Australian National Centre for Latin American Studies at the ANU, which is going to be looking at a unique project in Ecuador, which is an attempt to preserve a vital part of the Amazonian system, uh, a vital part of biodiversity for the world, uh, in the face of a problem which is the need of Ecuador to extract natural resources from that area, in particular oil from that area. And a proposal has been made some years ago by the government of Ecuador, which as far as I know is completely unique, which is that Ecuador will take half the burden, will pay half the cost of keeping that oil in the ground forever in order to preserve that part of the environment in return for the other half of the cost being paid by the international community and a fund that has been set up in order to do that. So the research project involves really actually four disciplinary areas. Uh, my own area which is political economy. So I and along with Ecuadorian colleagues will be looking at a fairly simple cost benefit analysis of the carbon dioxide emissions which would be saved by keeping the forest preserved as it is. Uh, the cost benefit analysis of preserving the biodiversity and all the potential commercial benefits which flow from that compared to the cost of extracting the oil or the benefits of extracting the oil. We also have uh, uh, an international legal expert from the College of Law who again will be working with people from Ecuador to look at the kind of international legal frameworks which might work uh, in these circumstances which might for example be able in some way to bind future governments of Ecuador to a decision to leave the oil in the ground forever, whatever the cost of oil, even if the cost of oil rises in the future. We have a medical anthropologist who is associated with us who will be looking at the health effects of oil exploration in that region, particularly on the indigenous people of the region. There are two groups in this area who are voluntarily uh, out of contact with everyone else and the extraction of oil would open up roads, open up the forest and would certainly disrupt that isolation. And finally we have a colleague from the Fenner School of the Environment who again with Ecuadorian colleagues will be looking at the science of the area, the published, in particular the published literature on the biodiversity of the region and so on and its fragility. Ecuador as a whole is quite a small country but it has about 10 percent of the world's flora and fauna, 15% uh, of the world's birds. And when you walk through the Yasuni, which is the area in particular that uh, we're looking at, where the oil is, uh, when you walk through the Yasuni, you can't help but see the changes constantly. Almost every few metres, you see almost a different landscape taking shape. Uh, and of course, it's all encompassing. There's a huge forest canopy which envelops you almost uh, as you walk through it. And there are indigenous people uh, living in the area as well. Some in contact with people who you can go and meet and talk to and see and so on, and others out of contact. Uh, but it's quite a, a different experience, I think, walking through a rainforest like that than other places I've been to in the wilderness here in Australia, for example. Well, the problem with oil exploration and extraction in the Yasuni has, I think, already uh, been shown. The government of Ecuador is in conflict already with Chevron, uh, which bought Texaco, which operated in the, in the area, in the Ecuadorian Amazon, for more than 20 years, and is accused by 30,000 Ecuadorians who have taken up a class action suit against it of dumping oil and causing health problems and so on. Um, even if oil companies are careful in an environment like this, it is essentially impossible not to severely disrupt important parts of the ecosystem. You need oil pipelines uh, to take the oil out, you need settlements, you need towns, you need a working population there, you need ports on the rivers uh, in order to, to move machinery, you need roads cutting through the jungle. And all of those things change the, the environment. They bring greater populations, they bring all sorts of changes. So even with the best will in the world, I think, oil exploration in the region would undermine the precarious environmental balance. There have been several important discoveries already, uh, in fact almost by chance in some cases. Uh, some organisms have been found which appear to have uh, anti-cancer uh, agents associated with them. 
uh, another a published a peer, in a peer-reviewed journal, a published paper by a group of Cornell postgraduates who went to the Yasuni actually found a fungus that eats plastic. Uh, that we're just really looking at a very, very small sample of the potential for that region uh, and what's there. We don't know what's there. And what we do know, however, is if there's significant oil extraction, then much of that biodiversity will be lost and we'll never know.